All right, so today we're checking out the Antina Tina 2S 3D printer. This is one of those sort of smaller scale 3D printers. It's like 210 millimeters by 210 millimeters by 290 millimeters. So pretty small and then the, the, um, the, the print bed is also pretty small. It's like 100 by 100 by 110 millimeters. So this is gonna be for your smaller 3D print projects. And I think this um, is primarily for PLA, although we'll do other uh, filaments. But we're gonna just do an unboxing today. I'm gonna put together real quick in this video and do the initial print and show you how it work, how it works in Cura. Uh, do a Cura setup and uh, if there's any further uh, information that you like on this in a future video, you can let me know in the comments. So let's go ahead and get this unboxed. Okay, got a little thank you card and then on their side here, there's a quick start guide and let's go ahead and take a look at that. It's so pretty basic. Um, we're gonna cover the steps on how to put this together in this video. So these things are gonna be covered already. Also, there's a, a bunch of videos on their YouTube channel and they cover the basic installation and operation of the printer. So I'm not going to uh, regurgitate all that. I'll link that in the video description if you guys want more detailed information on how to put this together. This is one of the included um, filaments here. It looks like it's just white or some sort of a glossy white here. 1.75 millimeter PLA, 100 gram roll. Include a bag here with some uh, printed uh, samples here. I guess this is the, what you should kind of should expect in terms of print quality. So just to show you really quick what they should look like. Pretty nice. I'm pretty happy if uh, these are the prints that I would get. It's like a mobile phone holder. So some basic stuff. A USB cable here, I guess, to connect to your computer. A little bag of accessories, uh, SD card. It's gonna be some sample prints on this, so we're gonna do for our first print. USB-C to USB-A adapter. You got a glue stick here. Uh, this bed plate, I think, will meet that for certain types of filaments. And then you got some basic tools. You got a spare hothead and some Allen wrenches and a little wrench tool there. Here's the included power supply. And it does, it does have a nice little on-off switch here on the cord. And it's got a little barrel, barrel connector here, plugs into the printer. So you can see here, it comes pretty well protected in styrofoam. I didn't see any damage on the outer box, so it's I expected to be fine. All right, so here's what it looks like with the plastic off and outside the styrofoam. Looks completely fine. Uh, looks like I have to remove this. Some more foam in here for protection. Gonna have to remove this uh, tape here that's holding the hot end in place. And there's some tape over there. That's holding it. And there's a little uh, yellow clip there that's holding that Z axis in place. We've got to remove that. And it's talking about that here as well on the top. We have to remove the sticker. There's the uh, filament tube here, we'll have to stick that in here so the filament feeder. And we have a little, I guess this pops down and this is where the, the uh, filament roll will go on. There is an app, it's called the Polo Print Cloud app. I think it works for Android and iOS. Um, you can, on this version, because it has Wi-Fi, you can connect this to your phone and to the cloud and download uh, sample prints from their library. However, you will, your home Wi-Fi network will need to be uh, 2.4 gigahertz compatible. Unfortunately, mine is 5.8 gigahertz only, so I won't be able to demonstrate any of this stuff with the cloud in this video. They do have videos on their uh, YouTube channel. I'll again link that in the video description. That shows how, to, how that stuff works. Um, if you want to download uh, sample models, then you can download them to your phone and then directly to the printer and then print them on here. You can see this uh, print bed is quite small. Again, 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters. So I put the uh, micro SD card in here. Here's the screen and then you have your control here. 
over in the side the USB port to connect to your computer and then you have your uh, plug there for the power. Here's a look at the back side. Again, gonna have to remove all this tape here. Just another reminder, there's another QR code here. If you have any issues with this printer, you want to contact customer support, just uh, scan that QR code and I'll take you to their customer support website. All right, so I got rid of the uh, tape and this little holder here for the Z-axis. Took off the sticker off the top. It's gonna pull out the uh, filament tube here. I'm gonna pop this out here so we can put our roll on here. It's gonna hang like this. And we're gonna put the filament tube in here. You're gonna pull down or push down on this black part here. It's gonna see it moves up and down. And then you push the tube in all the way to the bottom. And then let go and then it should stay in place. And then you're gonna feed the filament up through the bottom here. I'll show you that here in a second. You're gonna hold this, uh, this is like a filament holder or locker. You know, open that up so that you can feed it through. And we're gonna to want to cut the end of the filament here. And what you wanna do is you wanna cut the, the end of the filament here at an angle so that it's easier to feed and won't get clogged. So we'll get this ready to feed. I'm gonna have it come underneath. It's gonna come in like this. But before I feed it in, I'm gonna put the micro SD card in. Plug in the power cord here in the back and go ahead and turn it on with this little switch here. All right, it's powering on. Oh, nice, we got a light under here. So you can see the uh, hot end went up. There's actually a light inside here, pretty nice. So you can clearly see what's being printed and what's going on inside here. Very, very nice. All right, so here's the uh, basic setup here, such your language. So we're gonna load the filament, so we'll hit next. And heat the nozzle. So it's gotta get up to temperature, 210 degrees so we can feed it through. So we have to wait for this to finish before we can finish, uh, feed the, the filament through. All right, so the beeping is telling us that we can uh, go ahead and load the filament now that it's up to temperature. So you shouldn't feel any resistance, just kind of feed it through. You're gonna feed it all the way through. It's gonna go basically to the hot end. Until you feel a little bit of resistance. Okay, now I, now I can let go. So you should be able to see a little bit of that filament coming out right there. And now we'll go ahead and press the button. It's gonna do a filament purge. And there it goes. Bunch of filaments going through there. It's just basically cleaning out the hot end in case like any other filament was there before. Okay, so I probably let this go a little bit too long. I didn't realize I had to press the button to stop it. And then you hit continue and then it'll stop. So we'll go ahead and clear this out of here. And then you get this screen. It says insert TF card. We did that already. Hit next. Print from TF. There should be some models already on here. So there's a ship, a rabbit. I'm not sure how some of these are. So it actually has the times there. So an hour and 48 minutes, hour and 14 minutes, hour and 17 minutes. And yeah, so there's a frog, hour and 12 minutes. Let's find one that's not going to take too long. Let's see, what's on the next page? There's more. Wow, this is an elephant. It takes three hours and 13 minutes. Dragon, cat. Okay, some of these are really long. Anchor for an hour and 14 minutes. So these are all pre-sliced models. Okay, so it looks like there's four per page. So let's see what the shortest one is, the anchor. And then there's the tesaur, pterosaur? I guess that's some kind of dinosaur, hour and 17. And there's a rabbit that's an hour and 14. Let's do the rabbit. And uh, that looks pretty reasonable. Hit that. And it print. So this is pre-sliced and um, I will talk about the Cure stuff, how to use a slicer a little bit later in the video. They have their own slicer as well, a couple other ones. I'm not going to demo those in this video. They have videos on their channel. 
I really don't feel like spending time relearning another slicer. I know Kira pretty well, so I'm going to be using that. And it is compatible with this printer, so you'll see a demo of that a little bit later. So here's what the printer is doing. It's getting started here. And we'll come back um, after the print's done. Alright, so it took just about exactly what it said, about an hour and 15 minutes. Let's see what we got here. So it popped it off of the, there's like a brim here. And then this is just a magnetic plate, so this will just pop off. And then you should be able to just bend this and it should just pop off of here. Alright, so getting the brim off of the build plate was pretty challenging. I probably should have waited to, for the thing to cool off completely before trying to bend it off. Uh, but I used a little cutter to get underneath and kind of pry it off there and it did come off. There's a little bit of PLA still stuck on here. That's kind of normal. I was a little worried that the uh, build plate wouldn't be sticky enough and that's why they included the glue stick. But for this filament, it's, it doesn't seem to be a problem. And here's the print itself. Pretty clean. Obviously, there's a little bit of cleanup needs to be done here and just snip that off. But, uh, yeah, not a lot of defects. They did a good job in slicing it. Obviously, the bottom here, you probably have to sand that off because of the brim that was used. But if you go to the other side, you'll see there's a seam here that's kind of noticeable. And this is a setting that you can change in your slicer where you can randomize that. And apparently, they didn't do that for this particular print that was sliced uh, but overall for this printer not really doing much work at all literally just uh, took it out of the box and did a basic setup didn't change any of the settings I did use their pre-sliced um, model that was on the uh, SD card and you get a pretty good print out of that so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, set up Cura and uh, we'll print a uh, a model of my own that I want to try on this printer and see how it turns out. All right, so we'll go ahead and start downloading uh, the latest Cura. It's uh, 5.8.1 in Windows. All right, so here it is in my downloads folder. Go ahead and install it. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and add the printer. It's a non Ultimate printer. And it is a non-networked printer, so let's see if we can find it here. All right, there's Antina, and there is the Tina 2S. And we'll hit next. Uh, this is like some new features, so we'll skip that. And release notes, we'll finish. And there we go. Here's the build plate. And it's using generic PLA, draft. We take a look at the settings here. I'm not going to adjust anything. Uh, I think it's going to come out okay. I, I just want to check a couple of things here. Uh, we're not going to do support. Well, I think this, the, the, the thing that I'm going to be printing might need support, so I'm going to turn that on. And let's look at adhesion. All right, I'm going to click this show custom, show all the settings here. Let's uh, check a couple settings here. Speed looks okay. And quality, draft settings. All right, so temperature looks okay. And I'm going to change the build plate temperature to 50 because that's what the, um, the sample uh, print was at 50 degrees. I'm going to leave the temperature alone at 200. That's the default. That's what the sample printed at. So under adhesion, uh, I'm going to go with skirt. And do three lines. Let's go ahead and find my STL file. Bring that in. And I'm going to want to rotate this. I just want to print it like that. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'll go ahead and slice. And hit preview here and see what it looks like. So we got that skirt there, got the supports in place. All right, everything looks pretty good. Yeah, it says it's gonna take an hour and 40 minutes. So go ahead, save this to my downloads folder. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy the G code file to that uh, micro SD card. I'll just put it right over here. I'll take it over to the printer. All right, so go ahead and print from the micro SD card. And there's the file. And to the print, should be that easy. There it goes. And let's see, does it have any idea how long it'll take? It doesn't say. I think that there is the run time. But uh, Cure it said it'll take about an hour and 40 minutes, so we'll let it do its thing and we'll be back and see what it looks like. All right, let's take a look at what we got here. All right, looking pretty good. Let's see if we can pop it off the bed or the uh, little plate, build plate. All right, this one definitely coming off better. I let it cool this time, so I think that's a key. Uh, still, the supports are still stuck there, and kind of have to pop those off. Yeah, this is this is going to be a bit of a a pain to remove, but yeah, you can get it off. So this is just infill of 10%. This is the default, and very nice and light. Let's see what these if these uh, supports come off pretty easily or not. And relatively okay got to it's gonna require a little bit of cleanup pretty standard you gotta get all those supports off but the print itself looks really really good and this is just on the default PLA settings didn't do any you know, like I said I think I changed just like the temperature the bed temperature to 50 instead of 60 but it looks just like the rabbit the one that I printed from the uh, uh, from the built-in micro SD card, the one that came from the company, it was sliced by them. I sliced this in Cure, as you saw. Very easy to do. Uh, this is uh, going to be one of the printers you can you can get up and running really quickly. All right, so cleaned it up, got all the little sports off of there, and this is the print with the camera that is uh, what this is what I intended for. This is the Hawkeye split cam 4K, and this is actually the version five. It just came out recently. And I'm going to have a review video on this camera on my channel pretty soon. I uh, needed to print this to get some footage. I'm going to get yeah, it's the drone mount here. Puts on a drone, get some 4K footage, and we'll talk about those features in that future video. But for this printer, it's going to do for this video on this printer. Uh, I think it's working out pretty well. It didn't really have to do a lot of work to get the prints to come out, and they're pretty good quality. Uh, very easy to set up and uh, get going so definitely a thumbs up for this printer I'll put a link down in the description if you guys want to check it out if you you know have a little small projects like this it's a really nice quick way to get up and running without too much hassle that's good for this video talk to you guys in the next one